Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Clark and today I'm going to teach you how to build your own PC step by step. First, let's do a quick rundown on the parts. But before I introduce the parts, when buying parts for a PC, please do some research on what your PC parts are going to be and make sure that they are compatible with each other. A very useful site that I recommend is PC Part Picker and its System Builder. This PC is going to be an AMD build. So for the CPU, we have a Ryzen 5 2600 that has 6 cores and 12 threads. Next, for the motherboard, we have an XA320M gaming motherboard from Asus. For the power supply, we have a light power 550 watt power supply from Thermaltake. For storage, we have a 120GB SSD from KingMax. This is where we are going to install our Windows 10 on. Next, you have two sticks of 8GB of DDR4 RAM from TForce, which is RGB. And lastly, you have the graphics card, a GTX 1050 Ti with 4GB of VRAM from Palette. And for the case, we'll introduce that later on in the video. Okay, let's unbox the Ryzen CPU. Here is the stock AMD cooler that comes with it. An adequate cooler for this PC because you won't be overclocking on this motherboard. To mount this, you'll have to screw in these four screws to the back plate of the motherboard. This also has a 4-pin fan cable that you need to plug into the motherboard. The CPU is a 2nd gen Ryzen, a Ryzen 5 2600. It has 6 cores and 12 threads with a base clock speed of 3.4 GHz and a max boost clock of up to 3.9 GHz. For the RAM, we have two 8GB sticks of T-Force Delta from Team Group. It also has RGB lighting. Its speed is at 2400 MHz. For Ryzen CPUs, it's ideal for your RAM speed to be around 3000 plus MHz, so we'll have to deal with this for now. Then the GTX 1050 Ti. It has 4GB of VRAM, enough for running single player games on low to medium settings at 1080p and very capable of running esports titles at high settings. This palette model also features an HDMI port, DVI, and display port so you can have up to 3 displays using this GPU. Now for the A320 motherboard from Asus. Its form factor is M80X. You can determine this when the motherboard has an M at the end of its name like B450M or in this case, A320M. In the box, you'll find the motherboard, the I.O. shield, and the manual. In the middle, you'll find the CPU socket where you'll put the CPU in. Beside that are the RAM slots. This motherboard has four. Some motherboards have only two. So please consider that when you're choosing your motherboards. Next is the PCIe slot. This is where you will put your graphics card in. Then we have the 8-pin and 24-pin ATX for power delivery coming from our power supply. So near the CPU socket and RAM slot is the CPU fan header. You'll need to connect your CPU fan cable here. At the bottom right part of the motherboard, you'll find the SATA ports where you'll connect your storage devices. To the right of that is the front panel I.O. pins where you'll connect the front I.O. cables from your PC case. And for the other parts of the motherboard, please refer to its manual. So all AM4 AMD motherboards right from the box already has the back plate and its brackets installed. But for me, it has already been removed. For the storage, we have a KingMax 120GB SSD. This will make your boot times faster, although at the cost of its capacity. So by capacity, SSDs are much more expensive than hard drives because of its speed. For the power supply, we have a light power 550W. We'll discuss more about it later. So for the tools you'll need is a screwdriver, a Phillips head and thermal paste if your cooler doesn't already have pre-applied thermal paste on it. And then wire cutters for finishing up your cable management at the end of the build. You might also need some zip ties and or a long nose. Well then, let's build the PC. So again, let's unbox the motherboard and place the motherboard on top of the box. The box will be our temporary workbench so that the motherboard won't build up any static. Next, get your CPU and your CPU cooler. Here is the Ryzen 5 2600 and its stock cooler. Then let's unlock the latch of the CPU socket and then match the corner of the CPU and the socket 
with the indicated arrow. Then we'll place the CPU into the socket. The CPU should just fall into place with little resistance. Don't force or push the CPU into the socket or its pins will bend and we don't want that. Like that, lock the latch to secure the CPU in the socket. Now if your heatsink already has thermal paste pre-applied on it, just screw it in. But mine doesn't so I need to put thermal paste on the CPU and spread it. Then screw it in. I use this spreading tool that came with the thermal paste so that the CPU has a nice and even coating in between it and the CPU cooler when it's mounted. Now let's mount and screw the heatsink on the CPU. Line up these four screws with the hose. Make sure the back plate is there and just screw it in. Now we want to screw it in an X pattern so that the pressure would be spread evenly across the CPU. So what I do here is turn the screwdriver four times on each screw at a cross pattern and repeat that until it doesn't let me screw in anymore. AMD's mounting design has a safety feature in place so that you won't be able to over tighten the CPU cooler. So when it doesn't let you screw it in anymore, stop. Now let's plug in the CPU fan in the CPU fan header beside the RAM slots or check your manual and locate where it is at. Next, we'll install the RAM. Make sure the RAM is oriented in the right direction. Check if the pins and the socket match. Then you'll be able to insert it in the RAM slot. We want the RAM sticks to be in the right slots. So if your motherboard has four RAM slots, insert the RAM to the second and fourth slots from the left. This will ensure optimal performance of your PC. So if your motherboard only has two RAM slots, that's okay, just put them in there. Now we've done everything that we can on top of this motherboard box. Let's now move it into the case. So the case we have is an METX form factor case from Rack. So the case has an acrylic side panel. So you can showcase your PC parts inside. Now let's unscrew these and remove the side panel. These are the front IO cables. And these are the front I.O. These are also the provided screws from the case. Now let's flip this and remove the back side panel. As well as removing the front panel with the I.O. We're already removing it so that we have more space to work with. So this case can fit three 120 millimeter fans in the front, one in the rear, and two up top, all 120 millimeter fans. A typical fan setup would be 3 intakes in the front and 3 exhausts in the rear at the top. This is commonly the most optimal airflow for most cases. So this area is the motherboard tray where we'll put the motherboard on. And below is the PSU shroud where we will place the PSU and as well as use the shroud to hide the excess cables from the power supply. These are the screws. And we're gonna need these gold screws called standoffs where the motherboard screws will be screwed into. So the pre-installed standoffs here are not enough for our motherboard. So we need to screw in the two extra standoffs in the case. I first hand tighten them and then tighten them more with a long nose. Next we're gonna find these screws in the provided screw bag. Now we're going to install the IO shield first into the case. This is a very important part. So do this first. Push the corners of the IO shield until you hear a click to lock it in place. Next, let's install the motherboard. Place the motherboard onto the tray and then match the motherboard holes with the standoffs. So we want to line up the motherboard holes with the standoff so we can screw it in correctly and properly mount the motherboard onto the case. Let's screw these in so that the motherboard is secure in the case.
Also, now would be a good time to tuck the CPU fan cable in so that it looks neater. Now let's install the PSU. So the power supply we have is a light power 550 watts. And this is it. A light power from Thermaltake. So this is the 24 pin ATX power. And then the 8 pin CPU power. Then we have two PCIe power connectors for graphics cards. Then a Molex and a SATA power pin. These are both for accessories. And the SATA pin is mostly for storage devices like SSDs and hard drives. Now let's install the PSU in the case. We're gonna mount it fan side down because this PC is going to be placed on a table. If your PC is going to be placed on the floor, it would be better to have it fan side up so that it won't intake a lot of dust. But if it's going to be placed on a table or like a shelf, it's better to have it fan side down. So now let's screw the power supply in place. Now we're going to route the 24 pin and the 8 pin into the front of the case. Then we're going to bundle up the other cables and shove it in to the power supply shroud. So here I made a mistake. The 24 pin was oriented the opposite way so I had to fix it. So make sure that the 24 pin and the 8 pin are oriented correctly. They are in the correct position if it's easily placed in and the latches match up. Let's install the graphics card now. Depending on your graphics card, it might need a PCIe power connector, so please double check. This GTX 1050 Ti does not need PCIe power connectors, so the cable management will be a bit easier. So let's set this aside for now and unscrew the back PCIe slot covers. So this 1050 Ti is a dual slot graphics card, so we'll need to remove two PCIe slots in the back. So most cheap cases have non-reusable PCIe slot covers. You need to bend it and snap it off to remove it, like this. And you can't put it back again. So double check when removing these. So now let's place the graphics card in. So we're gonna line up the PCIe pins to the PCIe slot. So that should be easy enough. And then push it down place until it clicks then screw these back in now let's head on to the ssd so here we're gonna need a sata cable this usually comes with your motherboard and this is where the sata cable and sata power is going to be plugged in so here i'm trying to figure out what orientation would be best so experiment on your case and think of what's the best placement and setup you can do in your case so that it would look neater and cleaner. So here I settled with this. An easy access to the back provided by the big hole there. Then we're going to plug in the SATA power and then the SATA cable. And then we're going to route the SATA cable to the bottom port. where it leads to the SATA ports on the motherboard. Then we're gonna plug in the SATA cable into the SATA port on the motherboard and we are almost done. All that's left to do is plug in the front IO, but before that, let's install a fan at the rear. So this is an RGB fan. It comes with a remote, a fan hub, and the screws. So the face of the fan where it has a shield blows air while the exposed side is pulling air. We're going to orient this fan as an exhaust. So the shielded side would be facing the back. So now we're gonna screw these in and route the cable through the back. Then we can plug the fan into the fan hub and then place the fan hub wherever there is enough clearance. But for this video, I won't be plugging it in. So I'm just gonna remove the fan hub entirely for now. 
Finally, we're gonna route the front panel cables to the back, then to the front. Plug them into their respective ports. Don't hesitate to read the motherboard's manual. For the front eye opens, there is a diagram near the pins on the motherboard. That'll help you to know where to plug them in. And you can also always check the manual. Alright, this is it. Spamming the delete key to enter the BIOS and... It boots! Okay, now let's plug in our Windows install media and boot off of that. So I have an external SSD as that. So let's load into the installation media and let's go. Select I don't have a product key or enter your product key here and then check the box then click next. Enter custom and then select the drive where you want your OS to be installed on and wait for the installation to finish. Here we'll just click yes, 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 and next. We can always change that when we are in Windows. And for the network, I've disconnected my Wi-Fi and my Ethernet. Then enter your name. And then you can check or uncheck those. And we are almost there. And we have Windows installed. Now I'm gonna install the drivers for NVIDIA Ryzen and also programs such as Heaven Benchmark, Prime95, and HW Monitor for monitoring temps of the graphics card and the CPU. And finally, we're gonna install ASUS RGB software from the motherboard's driver support site. And there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and learned how to build a PC. And yeah, peace, peace.